1951, Ray Bradbury, he was an author that I really don't think needs any sort of introduction, he's probably one of the most well-known science fiction writers of all time, wrote a short story called The Foghorn that would go on to become the basis for one of the most influential monster films of all time, Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. And I would jump ahead like, I don't know, 70 years, give or take, I suck at math, and a young modeler by the name of Daisuke Sato, who worked as an assistant modeler on Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, and Final Wars, took it upon himself to recreate the Foghorn Tale, but in the context of ancient Japan, with puppets. And for the most part, it works quite well. So Howl from Beyond the Fog was the result of a Kickstarter campaign that racked in about 1.2 million yen, roughly the equivalent of $11,000 US, and is very clearly a passion project for Daisuke Sato. It's a very simple story of a blind girl, Takiri, who shares a bond with a giant beast called Nebula, and her cousin Aiji, who just kinda just gets involved by accident. One day, a group of thugs attack A.G. and Takira. This pisses off Nebula big time, and he storms off to go wreck some shit. It's a very simple plot. Now, obviously what makes this movie stand out among the other kaiju movies out there is that it's done entirely with puppet work and miniatures. Now, this isn't entirely unique, considering Thunderbolt Fantasy already does this with a much bigger budget. But for such a small budget, it's fairly impressive what Daisuke was able to accomplish with this. Hell, he even managed to get Kizo Murase involved, who's a sculptor and suit maker who worked on, like, good lord, like basically all the monster movies. Nebula itself was done in various forms, and is actually a pretty cool design. There was a miniature rod puppet, a full suit that some poor bastard had to get on all fours inside of, and a hand puppet. And while there are a few shots where the puppet moves a little janky, mainly when the monster's well lit in like daytime scenes, the scenes where it's obscured by fog or shot from like a ground level point of view are gorgeous. Plus its roar is a jacked up foghorn, which is just dope. The human puppets, on the other hand, well, their mouths don't move at all. There are a lot of shots where it's very obvious that it's just a dude holding a puppet in front of a green screen, and for that same reason, you never see any of the puppet shot from the waist down. Because of this, all the shots of the humans are done in like really close up or have this weird framing where they either stick out of view too far or they have weird placement within the frame. It's literally all just to keep the puppeteer's hands out of view. And I gotta be honest, it takes away from it somewhat. It lessens the impact of scenes that should have impact, you know what I mean? And like I said, I'm not knocking this project at all. I know it was low budget and they did what they could with the money they had. I'm just pointing it out. There's genuine talent at work here. It's very well shot, and when it works, it works damn well. You can clearly see where the money went. I've seen a lot crappier movies shot for a hell of a lot more money than this cost. And how this wasn't even Daisuke's first attempt at doing the Foghorn story. He did another short film back in like 2007 that I don't think has ever seen the light of day, but if these images are anything to go by, dude really improved his craft. And apparently Daisuke Sato and Kizo Murase are going to be teaming up together again in 2023 for Brush of the Gods, which is thankfully a full length picture. And I'm really eager to see what they can pull off with a large budget. And if the recent test footage of Orochi is anything to go by, then... And I just want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, Kyle Moylan, Joshua Locko, Cameron Benson, The Mouse Slider, Brandon B., Andrew Gibson, and Ivan. I appreciate your support, as always.